welcome to another episode of You Already Successful. You, yes you, right now. I got a special guest. A lot of, uh, a lot of people may know this special guest. Somebody who's really dear to me. Um, I watched him grow up, literally. Um, super proud. Um, but he's super accomplished. So um, he's written and directed over 30 films. That includes uh, short films, promotionals, commercials. But he's also been in front of the camera acting. Uh, he also edits. He pretty much does it all. Um, he created his company, his own company, film company. Um, and he sold films to a couple companies, uh, some of his short films that he created. I'm talking about my little brother, Ian Walker. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah, so, I mean, this this is new. Yeah, me, and um, and you're in town, which is uh, doesn't always happen. Um, you live out in California. You have been living out there for about twelve years now. Yeah, that's wild. You say it out loud. Yeah, it like is. I just started college yesterday. <laughs> so okay, so I just ran through a, a couple of your accomplishments. You have a lot more, uh, but that's already a lot that I just uh, ran through. Um, and when I was, uh, when we were talking about this before, it, you know, it was kind of, I saw your eyes kind of like pop, like, whoa, I wrote, I wrote and did that much. Oh, with, with all the stuff that yeah, I've done. Oh, stuff yeah. You've done. Yeah. I never said that number out loud before. I had to like kind of sit down and think about it. But yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it is wild. So we're going to, I'm going to take you back. So, um, and then we'll come back forward again to, to present. Mm -hmm. um, but just jumping right in, you've always been different and um, and special, you know. So um, in the good way, in a good way, right. you've always <laughs> <laughs> you've always been different and special. Um, so I mean, and I think you knew that about yourself, and you you you've been okay with that. Yeah. Um, like you, for me, you know, again, watching you grow up, this is like from, from childhood. Um, I, you've always spoke very proper, um, which unfortunately, you know, it, growing up where we where we grew up that you're weird, almost you, you're, it's almost bad to, to do the right stuff and speak the right way. Yeah. I used to get talked about. Um, I sound like a white person or something. <laughs> yeah, so you always spoke proper. Uh, I remember, like, you know, our older brother, Junior. Oh, shout out to O. Um, we would go play basketball. I'm like, Ian, let's go play basketball. You want to go? He's like, ah, oh, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm just teaching myself how to play the piano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just stuff like that. Or like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm just here. I'm going to work on writing this film. I mean, just ever since... Childhood, I mean, you probably were 10, 12. How old were you when you when you first really start? Uh I'm I don't I don't remember an, an exact age. Mm -hmm. I just um maybe maybe around like fourth grade, whatever age you are in that around that time. Um because yeah, I remember like, you know. Being, you know, being on the like the church basketball team and kind of not not really wanting to be there, <laughs> but kind of just doing it because, um, you know, you guys are doing it and, you know, it's good to be active and all of that stuff. Um, but once I finally, you know, you know, probably around, probably like, like seventh, eighth grade is when I really, I know I felt that way before, but around se like seventh and eighth grade is when I like really was like, okay, like I like playing basketball, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not going to go to the park and, you know. Yeah. You, you weren't that good at it either. Though. No, nope. Yeah. I still suck. Yeah. You jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's jump funny now. It's garbage. It's funny now because I actually, I do like playing basketball, 
and I go play basketball with some friends, but I tell them, I just give them a disclaimer. I'm like, I'm not that good. Yeah. I, like, I like playing basketball, but I'm not that good at it. It's good so, cardio. Yeah. That's about <laughs> all I use it for. <laughs> yeah, man. But no, all jokes aside, I mean, so like, I remember you used to write Dragon Ball Z. I mean, we were huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Um, See it on the shirt. <laughs> I so didn't realize you got on a Dragon yeah. Ball Z shirt. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, you used to write like in re- like write um, episodes, and I remember like you flickering the lights when like you're charging up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we made we made like a home video. Yeah. Or you guys. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You've been like doing it way before you took off for California. Um, so like you were. You you didn't fit in, which you were okay with. You were special in a good way. Mm-hmm. You were always writing, um, and then you were real determined. When it came time, like after high school, you were determined to go to California. Yeah, and you know it. It wasn't always wasn't always the case. Um, I was originally after I don't know if you know this. After I graduated high school, I was a I was pretty much set on going to community college for a couple years and then trying to transfer to like Towson or to Maryland um, University. And then my friend Adrian was like, um, hey, I'm going out to school in California and it's near Hollywood and I know you like making movies and stuff like that. um, So you should like go and check it out. And then, um, yeah, and then that's how I was like, okay, um, let's let me try and do the application because I think I think I found out about that school. Like I don't know if you want me to name drop the schools or anything like that. I'm fine. I, I, found, well, I found out about the school um, like maybe like a month and a half or something before they actually started. Yeah, but it's something good that you drop them right. You know about the no the no, no, no yeah school. it's La, La Sierra. Okay. That's where I went to All school. Right, cool. <laughs> I can't get canceled before I actually yeah, get no. started. All right, yeah, right. No, it's, it's La Sierra. All La Sierra right, University. It's all good. Shout out to La Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any problems. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I applied, and then like a week and a half later, I, I got accepted. And then that's when I told mom, and I was like, all right, well, she's like, if you want to go, let's go. And then I was like, okay. And then ever since then, I was like, all right, let's, um, you know, let's, let's go and go from there. I never knew that story. I just always thought you had it. How determined you were to go to California, I guess when you found out about it, you were like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, um, cause you know it all, it had always been like kind of like a pipe dream to actually go and um, you know ever since I remember like being a kid watching like Spy Kids and all that stuff and uh, you know wishing to be like be in movies and you know do all that stuff and you know back then you know California is the place where they do all that stuff um, so it was more like it was more like like a pipe dream. Mm-hmm. And then I guess when the opportunity to just go to California in general, I don't, I don't even think I would have cared where in California it was. Just knowing that I was in California would have been, you know, like cool. Mm-hmm. And then um, finding out that, you know, the school was like so close to Hollywood and all of that stuff. That's when I just got excited because I was like, man, it's like a dream in just to even like be able to live there to start off with. Um, so, yeah. So you thought about community college before? Yeah. What mm-hmm. what made you think was that like something that you just saw and thought was the easiest or next what made you think community? I, I mean, I'm a product of community college then, you know, four year. Yeah. Um so I I I love the idea of uh community college and work while you go to school. But what what was on your mind? Well, I actually I applied I applied to I think like maybe 3 or 4 other universities that I didn't get into. Gotcha. And then um, I was like, well, you know, let me just focus up. I know I'll get into community college, so let me just w- worry about that and then focus on, you know, trying to reapply to the other schools that I apply to and actually get in after I get, you know, like general like credits done mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I'd always planned on... Um, doing like a major, a minor, or s- in something like media related, mm-hmm. whether it was like film or acting, um, or like something like that. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I went. You know, as you know, I went to community college. Um, <laughs> I guess kind of on accident. 
I uh, I was I was early in my career. Um, my day job, you know, is uh, as you know, I work in healthcare mm. and um, on administration, not clinical at all. But I didn't really know what I was trying to do, um, and I got in the door. Um, they gave tuition assistance, provided tuition assistance. So I literally would from your job from my job. Mm-hmm. So I would take um, a couple courses every time I got more money for tuition assistance. Fast forward, um, you know, I've been I've been in healthcare for fifteen, going on sixteen years. But like fast forward eight years or so into it, I looked up and I was like done community college, done transferred and went to university in Maryland, done that. So what that taught me is so much just like working and going to school. Mm-hmm. And um, it didn't feel good along the way. Um, you know, I saw people go off. My friends go off, do four years, come back. They were good. I'm still <laughs> um, working um, on my on my other degrees. But it all came together. Yeah. I was kind of just running my race. But anyway, enough about me. That was just a plug for community colleges because I'm a big uh, advocate for, uh, for people going to community college. Well, yeah, but with that also, like, you know, because you're saying like you saw your friends go to um, four year degrees and then come back, and then like you're still you know you know here or whatever. Um, that you know that's also kind of a blessing um, because you don't have to spend like a whole bunch of money up front. Cause community college is a lot cheaper mm-hmm. than university, um, and then also like I've come to realize like everyone's kind of just like on their own time, mm-hmm. you know. Or, you know, you're not running anyone's race except your own. Right. So, um, like, yeah. That was yeah. I, I mean, I I could take up the rest of this podcast talking about all of uh, the come up that community college allowed me, not just the money it saved, not just me getting the degrees that everybody else had eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was able to save money. Uh, it taught me discipline, working and going to school, like balancing the two. Mm-hmm. Got money in the pockets when the economy first tanked, or I guess not first tank, when it tanked, whatever year that was, had enough to buy a house yeah. around that time. I think I got got my house a little bit, a few years after. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny that, um, like, I'm a big advocate for college, mm-hmm. but everyone, like, not everyone, but a lot of people look at me weird when I tell them that I'm not forcing my kids to go to college um, or anything. The, uh, well... Okay. Who are those people? Call them up by name. It's like no, I'm just my kidding. kids. No, no. Oh, the people who. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I. Um, the only way I will like force them to go to college is if they have no, if they have like no idea at all what they want to do mm-hmm. by the time they get like about to get out of high school or something. Because that's what actually what helped. Like I knew I always wanted to, you know, do stuff in like communications, you know, film, you know, media, and all that stuff. Um, but it was like such a broad topic mm-hmm. that it was like so broad. If I didn't really like go and experience things and try different things while I was in college to figure it out for myself, I probably would have just like it would have been like too broad of a thing where I wouldn't have just chose anything, and then I would have just been okay working at like some like desk job or something. Yeah. Um, so when I went to college is when I really like I went to college thinking I wanted to be an actor at first, and I still like acting and all that stuff. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, meeting a few people, taking a few courses here and there, and doing all that stuff where I was like, I like, you know, the behind the scenes, like directing and producing a lot more. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so I want to get into that. Um, so, um, you know, you talk about going to California. So you were determined to go. Once you made the decision to go, there was a lot of people that was like, no, Ian. <laughs> and I probably was one of them. No, yeah. Ian, come on. And I think it was more so everybody trying to keep you. You were the baby. Everybody's trying to keep you safe yeah, and uh, and home. And you going out, I think you were the first to kind of, like, go out yeah, and um, and go away. Um, and you did that, and that was, uh, I think, people were more scared than anything. Yeah, I think it was just people. Not that they trying were trying to, to keep you back. Yeah, yeah, I think it was trying to look out for me. Like, I don't have, like, any family over there. Um even right now, the only family that's over there is just, like, my in-laws. Um, and it's just, you know, young 18-year-old kid going off, like, away from home 
like being the first and the first one to go so far um then you know it's i guess it's natural that you know a healthy amount of fear that comes with that especially if like you're my parents or like you know brothers or something the who were but there were a couple of people that were like um on your side and like held you down like no this is what you want to do let them do it i support them 100 percent. yeah like mom mm-hmm. um for example and she I mean, she was always like that but then especially after she went flew me over there for the first time mm-hmm. and all that stuff um like i think like we got there and then within like the first maybe like couple hours of orientation we'd already like met a bunch of people and I already that's when, that's when I met Tyler, mm-hmm. um, Peter, you know, like all those guys, Joe, um, all I met all of those guys within like the first couple hours of being um, being in orientation, and then we're still like really cool to this day. So I think um, after you know after she went there and saw it, then she for sure was like, you know, it'll be all right. Um, and you know a couple of you know other like aunts and uncles who kind of um, you know kind of just like believed in. You know, making your own, your own thing. Yeah, yeah. My own finding was, your own way. She's always that way. <laughs> yeah. When it came to you two, um, I think everybody, you know, felt like, oh, I got to protect Ian. But like, she was like protecting people, protecting you from people that felt they should protect you too. Right. <laughs> she's like the ultra protector, and it was like, no, if that's what he wants, like, let him leave him alone. Let everybody, him right? Everybody yeah. would stand down. Um, and she, you know. She she worked so hard on everything that she um, did and for everything that she had, um, and uh, she was always super determined. You know, ever, if she wanted something or she wanted to do something, she wasn't waiting. No matter how heavy it was or you know what she had to do, right? She would do that. Did that like seeing her um, have you know an effect on um, just you in general? I mean, that's a rhetorical question, obviously, but. Well, yeah, because I saw her like almost every day before I left. Um, but I uh, know uh, for sure. I think um, it did, but I didn't actually realize. You know, it's kind of just like her, like not hereditary or genetic, but it's just you know you inherit um, personalities, mm-hmm. and so I spent a lot of time. I was a big mama's boy, um, so I spent a lot of time around her. So. Um, I think I just picked up on that stuff, and I didn't realize until later that you know this is <clears throat> you know my mom's personality traits, um, especially like those in particular. Uh, she, I was just picking up on. She's my mom too, by the way. Oh well, yeah, I know, I'm just <laughs> we did, always did do say, that. Did I say my mom? Yeah, we always do that when we talk about it. like yeah, my mom or my dad. We're like we don't got the same parents, right? But uh, yeah, this we are blood brother. Like right. we say bro a lot to people. We are general. actually brothers. Yeah, we're actually blood brothers. Yes. Um, same mom, same dad. Um, but yeah, so you talked about envi- like you naturally saw mom. So without you even realizing it had an effect. And I think um, environment really is is uh, um, the overarching theme because it's it's important. Your environment has an effect on you. So right. where you were uh, to begin with, you didn't really fit in. Um, you knew that. You well, went to California. Mm-hmm. You found people. You said Tyler. Joe, Peter, people that you still like are really close to today. Mm-hmm. Um, and you really just fit where you were just yourself naturally. And you placed yourself in that environment. You knew enough about yourself. You placed yourself in that environment. Um, and then you settled. And then you you blossomed from there. Um, and uh, just like you said, like without you knowing, um, you know, what you were seeing from mom, um, you know, that that speaks to environment and, and I think you knew that about where we were here and um and you knew enough about California that when you were placed there, you know, you were a seed that just needed to be in the right environment. And once you got in there, then um you started to grow even more. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Um yeah, it's you know, I I kinda just leave it like chalk it all up to God. Yeah, um definitely. Cause like there, there are places in California that are not very good, <laughs> or like yeah. you, you'll get there. Cause you know, for someone coming who's never been to California before, who's always had it as like a pipe dream to go there, you think everything is all like super, like amazing and um, 
everyone has mansions and like you know stuff like that you get there there are there are some like really really bad places um just depending so i was just all saying all that to say i just you know thank god that i was in the right place i met the right people and um he's just put me in the right situations um mm -hmm. to be where i am definitely god had a hand on on your life for sure um and yeah and, and that's good to call out that is uh that's the that was the number one and is the number one factor mm -hmm. um so what okay you're in california now you're in school like what led you to film and maybe that was a decision before you well it went was to college i was i know i wanted to do something in the entertainment industry like related mm -hmm. um so how did you know that like what brought you well because i always like like I still like I have like four, like four hundred movies in my collection. I just like love movies, gotcha. and that's something I've, like ever since like we were kids. And then, um, yeah, I love going to the movie theaters. I go with you back and forth like all the time about the movie theater experience rather than <laughs> watching it at home on a TV. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm at home on a TV. I can uh, bring <laughs> all my own snacks. <laughs> I'll get in charge twenty dollars for Skittles. No, but we'll go it. ahead. That's part of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's uh, own. Right. Um, but no. So <laughs> I just knew something in that field, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. So I think you know when I first started college, I was a graphic design major, and then um, I, you know, I took like a few courses, and then, you know, I just, you know, to be honest, I just really didn't like my teacher. And he, like, turned me off to the whole thing in general. And people who've taken this person's class know who I'm talking about and why I'm talking about it. Okay. Just don't say his name. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> nah, I don't, um, I don't care. You can say his name if you want. Nah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. He's even, probably not there anymore even, if he's yeah. that bad. Well, no. he. So he's good, but he's just kind of, like, a jerk. Um, but he he's a jerk that will, like, make you feel better, that, that will make you better in the field. Mm -hmm. He'll, like, push you and, you know, he he's like really really strict. Like he failed a student on their final because they got in a car accident and was two minutes late for their final. So he's like uh, that kind of yeah, gotcha. Yeah, um, but he's really cool. Um, but you know, I didn't I didn't care enough about that major to you know go through you know go through all of that stuff. Um, so I so I switched, um, and then I landed. You know, at the time, you know, La Sierra didn't have a film program. So the closest thing they had to it was like communications, and so, um, so I chose communications uh, in specific um, communications theory, and that's what my major is on. And it, it kind of, it's kind of like a broad overview of all things communications, all the way from like how like humans interact communications, mm -hmm. all the way to like telecommunications, and then um, in that telecommunications um, part of the degree, there was. Um, like a, a video class, like a production class. And that was like the closest thing they had at the time to like a film thing. So I took that class and I loved it a lot. And then that kind of got me into the whole thing. And then I was, so I was doing that. And then I was also doing drama at the same time. I was in the drama club at La Sierra. And then we did like, I was in like their plays and all of that stuff. And then in that, there was a whole bunch of, um, I made a whole bunch of friends who were like actors and all that stuff who all wanted to like do film and do all that stuff as well. And we were all just kind of like talking about it. Um, but no one was really like ever doing anything. So I was like, man, you know, it's like fine. I'll you know, get a, you know, find some camera and do something. So I know like the very first thing we did and it was for that, um, for that class, for that, you know, video productions class, I made like a you know crappy little static shock um short film mm -hmm. um like i got it like a t-shirt made with like the electric bolt on it and you remember static shock uh, that cartoon? yes the black superhero with the dreads who can like shoot electricity yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so we did that um kind of okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll put, uh, yeah, I'll put up a picture on yeah, the screen okay. here <laughs> um and then it was really fun you know doing all the behind the scenes stuff and everything on that and so then after that it's kind of when i like you know, switch my focus, and that's when I was like, man, I like, I really like doing the film stuff. 
Gotcha. And and it was that like your introduction to short film? Yes. Yeah. I had um I had a couple friends who had done a couple short films and everything. But I didn't really know I didn't really know how to get started or like how to, you know, go about, you know, doing any of that stuff. Um but yeah, so I guess that was my introduction into doing like into like actually making a short film. Even though that was like it was literally just like a video camera, like a camcorder and which is literally all you need, but you know. Yeah, speaking of that like, you know, video and just a camcorder cuz you don't need a lot. Hmm. Did the the at least and I you have watched way more films than I have, but like super bad. That Thanks. movie comes to mind. Mhm. Uh, were you saying facts because you watch more? Yeah. Me? Okay. <laughs> you, can, you can have that. Uh, Super Bad comes to mind. Um, you you know Super Bad that movie. Yeah. And I think, I think, um, don't fact check me. I think that was like one of the first movies where it was like super low budget. They just used regular cameras, and I mean it crushed the box up, uh, crushed the box office. Yeah. For that for that type of that. The only thing that came kind of close to that before Superbad, I think, was like the 40-year-old version. The 40-year-old mm. version. I don't know if you, you've seen that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But then that was kind of, it seemed like that was kind of like a, like a, like a test of that type of comedy movie. Mm. And then Superbad came. And yeah, it was, for, for those type of movies, they don't have like extremely big budgets or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so Superbad was made for relatively cheap and it did really, really well. And then that kind of started that like wave of those kinds of movies. Did that influence uh, you at all? With the I always thought you don't need a lot of movie. Um, I always thought you don't need a lot of money to make um, to make a movie. Um, it's just literally just about the story. And I mean, yeah, having you know good cameras and all that stuff helps. But especially if you're just getting started, mm -hmm. you can literally just use, especially phone stay, you can just use like your iPhone um, and just plan out your shots. And just as long as you have a good story um, or a decent story, um, then people will, that's all you need to get started. So we talked about a lot um, so far. Um, but I want you to talk more, a little bit more about your, your challenges that you that you were faced with. So, I mean, it sounds like a pretty sweet story, um, but I'm sure like with everything, um, there's a lot of like uncertainty, um, anxiety, stress along the way. Like, I mean, even from the very beginning, when you went out to California to, to make that decision to go, um, you know, you were determined to go, but I imagine you still had, there was still some anxiety with that. Yeah, and I have anxiety already just in general to start off with, so that doesn't, like, help anything. Um, but, yeah, and a lot of those stuff are still, like, present. Like, I still get, you know, nervous and, um, like, freak out kind of about, you know, how things are going to go down, and especially now I have a family and you know, have to worry about, you know, wife and kids, and, you know, there's, so, you know, there's, you know, a lot of that stuff is still there. Um, maybe it's, maybe evolved a little bit because instead of like, oh, you know, where am I going to sleep tonight? It's like, you know, I have two kids and a wife and how am I going to make sure that they're okay and everything's paid for while still trying to get, you know, this stuff done. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I know we talk um, offline as well about it. Um but so even when you go to California and you finally make the decision to go out there and you get settled, just um, without fast forwarding it too much, just back in college, mm -hmm. um, like you said with the professor, you know, there was a class that you didn't like. Um, uh, I'm sure there was some, you know, maybe I, from the outside looking in, it looks like every everybody um, you made friends with uh, but I imagine that's not the case. Maybe there was uh, some pitfalls and stuff along the way. Um, was Did you ever doubt any, like, is this going to work out? This is what I set out here to do, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let me see. Every, you know, yeah, yeah. 
there's definitely the times where um, things got difficult, you know, um, eating a lot of spaghetti um, and, you know, just asking, you know, trying to figure out the next move and how, you know, how it's going to how it's going to go. But, you know, I always, you know, mom helped like a lot with that, especially when I first moved out of the dorms. And then so I kind of got like, you know, while you're in college, you're in the dorms. Um, everything's kind of like a package deal, so you kind of you feel like kind of a sense of security right there, um, saying like, okay, you know, I'm here in school and I'm here in the dorms, and this is where I'm going to be for a little bit. Um, but when I first moved out of the dorms, and you know, I was renting a room in um, in Miss Julie's uh, house. Um, I say her name because I love her to death, and yeah, I still talk to her to this day. That was a dope house too. I remember. Yeah. Um, that was when you know, you know, I got you know I had to start, you know, paying bills and you know paying rent and all that stuff. Even you know without you know goals aside, that you know that's brand new to me just by itself. Mm-hmm. So trying to figure that out, um, and then you know, once you get like you know a certain rhythm, um, then adding on you know goals to different things and figuring out how that's all gonna work, you know I. It's literally like every single time I've gotten to that point where I'm like, man, all right, this is it. Like, I don't see how I'm going to figure, like, I'm not, I don't see how I'm going to, you know, be able to continue, like, staying here with, you know, how much I'm making or, like, what I'm doing or if I'm, you know, playing my cards right to make it to the next, like, level or whatever. Um, every single time I get to that point, something and like I kid you, like something just happens out of nowhere in order for me to be able to stay and keep going. And that's why I'm just like, I believe that that's where I'm supposed to be. Because if I wasn't supposed to be there, like I'll be back here already or something. Like every, like ask Sarah, ask like anybody. Every single time we've gotten to that point and we start like, not necessarily panicking, but starting to like, like lightly panic. Um, something just like happens out of nowhere. And that's why I said, just like, leave it up to God. Like, the, and you know, a lot of the things that happen is just from the connections that I made. So, your circle, I think that, I think that your cir- my circle is actually what gave me a lot of like comfort in those yeah. times when it got, you know, got, when it got tough. Um, you know, knowing either it's people who live there and, you know, they're like, oh man, you know, don't worry. Like, if anything happens, I got you and you'll figure it out. Um, to people who, you know, are like me, who come from far and they're the only ones there and they were kind of like figuring out the next move together. Um, that, you know, that helped a lot through um, through those tough times. Like I remember there was a time where we were, me and a buddy, we were just, um, we were literally just eating for like a week, um, just like bread and water. <laughs> and then that's, you know, that's what it was um, until the next the next pay came and you know it's you know grateful for those times um it's you know it's funny to look back on them now and be like you know damn you know we were really you know doing stuff like that um but you know persevering through those times because you you know you you gotta really you gotta you gotta really want to believe in what you're doing so you can get through them when Mm -hmm. times get hard um and so, you know, luckily we all believed and left, like, you know, we're supposed to be here. Like, something's going to pop off, like, somehow. And, you know, that's what we just kept telling ourselves through those tough times. Um, and uh, besides, like, you know, asking our parents for a couple dollars <laughs> here and there. Um, but, yeah, because you know, it's not like we didn't have any help, you know. Um, but, you know, at the same time, just something, you know, being one of the Wanting to be able to like make it on your own, right? And, you know, right. You want to feel like you know you don't want to call home right. every time you need some money, right? Um, and then <laughs> the call home, <laughs> it wasn't like we came for money anyway, right? Exactly. So we would, we we know how you know tight stuff were was right. so, um, but yeah. So what you're describing, I mean, you were uncomfortable, yeah, at first, yep, and then you got comfortable, yeah. I knew, out, I knew you were about shout to shout out to this product. I knew he was about to plug his yeah, hat. Yeah, I'm about yeah. to plug <laughs> plug the hat. If you like the hat, we have some shirts, uh, some uh, hoodies, and merch coming. 
Uh, but for now, you can email me or uh, DM me for the product. But what you're looking at, uh, I can't zoom in, is... You can zoom in and post. Yeah, well, you can help me with that. All right. <laughs> He's been helping me edit these. So every every uh, episode so far that you've seen... Uh, he's helped me edit, so um, putting him to work while he's here. But he's teaching me how to fish. Right. But anyway, un- you were uncomfortable, <laughs> and then you got comfortable, and that's uh, I think um, I'm a firm believer of like uncomfortable is actually a really good thing. Mm-hmm. It means that you haven't been there before, where whatever there is or whatever situation there is, um, and then once you get used to that situation or get more settled. And you learn more, um, you get comfortable, right? And if you're always comfortable, then you're not really learning or growing. Or you're you're keeping yourself, you're limiting yourself um, and your potential. Um, so again, this merch uncomfortable um, because you you should be both. Mm-hmm. Uncomfortable is a good thing, um, but it helps you progress. It helps you progress. It means you're progressing. Helps you grow. And it means you're growing. Mm-hmm. So if you need the merch, you know, mm-hmm. we got it. Um, so, uh, you know, I think also a good challenge. Everyone needs a good challenge. Um, yeah. You know, you you didn't have to go anywhere. You could have easily gotten in. You don't have to get into community college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got into every community college I applied for. Um, and then I chose Prince, Prince George's Community College. Um but, but yeah, you, you, you chose the challenge, you took on the challenge, and everything that came along with it, you hit some rough patches, you, you kept your head down, and you said, you know what, I'm going to figure out how to make it work. And I remember there's been plenty of calls that we've had mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, this job not so much working out, what do I do, where do I go? Um, but the challenge, you accepted it, and, um, and you're better for it. It, it you progressed because of it, not by avoiding the challenge. So I'm a, also a firm believer of everyone needs a good challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to take on that challenge. Uh, you know, I feel so one thing, because you, when you're saying that, um, your friend Justin, mm-hmm. I just have to, like, I never, like, 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 apologize to him in person, because he did get me that good job oh, right, after, right after I graduated. And um, even after everything with mom and all that stuff, when I went, when I moved back, um, still offered me the job. And I feel so bad because I accepted it. But then the very, like, oh, it's crazy. Like, the very day I accepted it, I got another job offer doing, like, media and video stuff from another university. And then I just, like, sent him another email. I was like, oh, man, sorry. Like, I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> And he was, I know he, I know he was upset with me. Yeah. yeah. It, knowing Justin, he's probably upset. It's you don't get apologized. I mean, yeah. Justin knows, you know, he, Justin's not hurting. He's back here now. If too. it makes you feel any better, it worked out pretty okay for me. Yeah. <laughs> so. no. And, and it worked out for Justin too. He's, yeah. uh, he's good. Um, so just to tie it, pull it all together. Right. So before you got where you are now, you were good at drawing. You were good at like writing your films. No budget, not low budget, no budget mm-hmm. films, flickering lights. Um, you were well spoken. You you knew you didn't quite fit in, and you were okay with that. And yeah. you then built off of that, made the decision, and you know you went to you had to you know do decent in in high school and stuff to even get accepted in the, into La Sierra to go out to California and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you were really successful to begin with. And you you honed in on that and you built off of that. Um, and, and in spite of all of the challenges and everything that came with it, despite all of uh, the anxiety that you had and still sometimes have, um, you were already successful and you... you you honed in on that stuff. You got better, so you didn't like, um, you know, you didn't just turn a blind eye to uh, the things you needed to improve and work on, but you didn't let that discourage you and hold you back. Um, and you got better, and you're here because of of that. 
And that's really the point of this podcast is uh, to get people to understand, like, it don't look next to you um, or, you know, try to aspire to do that or feel bad about where you are um, because of what some where somebody else is. Right. Like, they they feel the same stuff you feel if they're not careful um, and looking at it the right way. It's uh, like I said earlier, it's like everyone's on their own time. Right. You know? Everybody's on their own time. You do stuff really well. You've made it through some really uh, tough stuff. Um, just build off of that and get to your next. You are already successful. There are, like, there are two, two things that come to my mind right now, like two analogies that come to my mind whenever um, like I hear things like that. It was um, uh, like I don't I don't know the exact age, but like Obama when he started when he got into office, I don't know how old he was like in his like fifties, I don't know forties or fifties, I don't know something. And then they did a comparison with um, Trump, and then when Trump got into office, he was like seventy, like eight, like almost like eighty years old. Um, and that's like everyone on their own time. They both did the same thing, but it got there at different times. Um, and then like Judge Judy, I was watching an interview with her and it's so simple what she said, but then you sit back and think about it and you're like, it's so true. And she was like, you know, if you don't make it in your twenties, you can make it in your thirties. If you don't make it in your thirties, you can make it in your forties. If you don't make it in your forties, you can make it in your fifties. And she, I, what I took from that was just her saying, just like, you don't, you know, you have time. You don't need to, you know, rush and everything, you know, the fastest way to, get to where you want to go is slowly um so just you know yeah that's all very true uh, the the what i what i bring up every show too is the definition of successful i was just about to say yeah because a lot of times people don't know what that definition or what those definitions are mm-hmm. they know one but not the other one right so successful um, the first definition is accomplishing an aim or a purpose, which everybody has done. Um, everybody is successful. But what the definition that we often use uh, to go by is the second definition, which is having achieved popularity, profit, or distinction. That right. is tied to money. So a lot of people feel unsuccessful, really because they don't know what successful is. Right. So like... I have I have I have maybe like like three tiers of what I consider successful. Um and I know like you know I guess like the first one would be like I've always wanted to make movies, you know, you know, do that stuff in that realm but also be able to still provide for my family. So, and, you know, even right now, I do other stuff besides um, besides film stuff that help me provide for my family as well. But the, but the point is being able to, you know, do what it is that I would like to do, essentially. I'm still not, like, completely there, but I don't have to, you know, I don't, I don't have to go to a job that I don't like in order to provide for my family. And still have to worry about trying to achieve all these things on the side, you know. So I've gotten to a place where I can do that, um, and it's you know that hitting one of the goals. And I think that's you know being that's my definition, or like my first tier definition of successful as far as when it comes to like my personal life. Yeah, I mean, success is a ladder. Yeah, it's a step. It, you know. It, it motivates you when you realize that you're already successful, then you're motivated and feel good about taking the next step and you take it more confidently. Right. Knowing um, that it's going to be uncomfortable. You just build off of what you have. I'm still not like where I want to be as far as like being successful goes or anything. Um, I still have, like you said, you know, everyone has their own, you know, goals and there's different levels to success. Like you said, there's two definitions. Um, but you know, I'm I'm still you know just still climbing the ladder like everyone else. You know, I'm not like I wouldn't consider myself saying that I have like made it um, in the in like the terms that I give myself. Yeah, you're also very humble. <laughs> I so guess. I know that about you. I remember when I first when I first made the decision to quit 
like my nine to five and just go straight like contract. And yeah, I was like, yeah, I was, I was real scared. <clears throat> um, Cause I was like, and this, I mean, no one knew that 2020 was going to go on the way it did, but I quit my job like January, 2020. Um, and um, yeah, I was kind of like, well, we'll figure it out somehow. Um, you know, I, I was in contact with um, Sarah's father about some, you know, possible gig work. And then, you know, I'd sold a couple of films, you know, before, and then I was like, well, if I did it before, I can probably do it again. Um, and then kind of just start making a plan for that. But I had no idea that any of that stuff was going to work out, especially um, with, 2020, <clears throat> with 2020, you know, playing out the way it did. Um, but, you know, the moment that made me just say, you know, like, I was about to curse. The moment that made me say, like, you know, like, screw it, um, was when, like, I did I did do a first job um, while I was still doing a nine-to-five. I did, like, another contract job. It wasn't film-related. It's, like, one of the other things that I do. And then on that first job, I got paid. Um, Hold up now. Watch out. I'm not going to say an okay. exact number, <laughs> but I got paid about – like maybe 70 to like 75% of my yearly salary for my nine to five. And then that's when it was like clicked. And then I was like, well, I was like, well, I can just do a couple of these a year. I was providing for my family with my salary from the nine to five. So work essentially, you know, in theory, working like one or two jobs and then just putting that to the side and using that for family, then that should free me up for the rest of, the year to you know do you know try to work on all this other stuff and I just say that to say like that's when it like clicked for me and then you know I was uncomfortable doing it because you know those jobs they're contract jobs so they're still not you know promised or anything um but kind of just like believing that everything will work out and then you know you know people people will be surprised on what they can achieve if they just do it you right. know a lot of people are kind of um you know be People were telling me, even my friends over there, they were like, you sure you want to? Because, you know, even before COVID and all that stuff, they're just, you know, it's a big risk, especially when I already had a wife and a kid. Yeah, um, I think I was one of those people because I was like, you got the health insurance too. Yeah. And I was just like. Yeah, uh, you were one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and that's why it's important you got to make your own decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it, you know, it was not, you know, we, you know, me and Sarah, we took a lot, a lot, a lot, of, t- a lot of time and thought and prayed about it. Um, and, you know, having a wife who's um, supportive is also very helpful. Yes. Um, Shout out to Sarah. Right. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of just said, do it. If we succeed, we'll succeed together. If we fail, we'll do that too together and figure it out. Um, and then, yeah, it just, you know, happens. Yeah, but honestly, like, if you want to do something, just, like, try it. At least try it. Because, you know, even I had a good rapport with um, with my bosses and everyone there. And they understood what it was I was trying to do. And then, you know, they said, you know, if all else fails, I can come back right. and I have a place there. So you had a safety net. But yeah. you were uncomfortable make, uncomfortable making a decision. But now you're pretty comfortable now that you've made it and you've settled in. Yeah. I mean, you like know, I said before, there's the, still... You can get the merch. <laughs> you know, just grab and hit me up. I got you. Yeah. Like I said before, there's still times where it gets, you know, difficult. And I'm like, man. Um, but, you know, usually it... You know, things work themselves out. So fast forward. Okay, so now, um, and actually before we get to now, you, uh, when you were at La Sierra, you worked in the film department. So like some of the people that you met. Uh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I, I took a lot of film elective classes. Okay. When the film department finally became a thing. It was too late for me to be a major and they didn't have a minor yet. No, no, I don't mean like study. I thought you like did, uh, didn't you do videos for like people coming in? The school, well, yeah, but yeah, that was so. That was just me and my friends. Oh, like with ISO, and then we got contracted by the different departments to make gotcha. those videos for the different departments. Gotcha. But I did have um, a lot of like film, um, film student friends of mine who were helping me out with those. Did you learn like a lot and get experience from doing those? Mm-hmm. Just being I learned almost. People? Yeah, I learned almost, especially with editing. I didn't take any editing classes or anything like that. I learned from my friend Ryan how to edit. 
And I was just sitting. Um, Shout out to Ryan. Right. And Ryan wouldn't even consider himself like a real editor. He just taught me like the basics. So like watching Ryan and Javi and Marcus, um, they taught me just like the basic stuff. And then I kind of figured everything out. That's like you teaching me editor. Right. Only difference is I'm, I'm going to be a professional after I'm after you're right. done teaching me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to. You gonna, I'm gonna charge you if you want. I have no certificates. Like I have no. It's just all self taught. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Okay. So now, fast forward to now. You have the wife. You have the kids. Um. You are a full time entrepreneur, but then you also have a day job, um, where you um. It's not your traditional nine to five. Uh, but you work in like the uh, courtrooms and do stuff and yeah, and that works out for your schedule. Um, but you're doing a lot. Um, I also have a e-commerce store. Okay, you have an e-commerce. You want to talk some about that? I mean, it's just you know the basic e-commerce store. Um, me and my me and Peter, um, we just partner on that, and then we're just pretty much you know, it's drop shipping if. You know, if people who know what drop shipping is, is drop shipping. Um, we just find products that are popular and sell them. Um, is it a website? Mm -hmm. What's the website? Uh, it's called shop shopdud.com. S H O P D U D dot com. Check out Shop Dud. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> what? It's still we should they not? It, no, I mean no, you can't. We just started it. So oh, it's okay. it's still in like the very beginning. Um, we're still like product testing and all that stuff. Keep your, just keep, check out shop dud every, every so often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll get there. Yeah. That's what's up. But it's like a baby hobby right now. Yeah. You're starting something else. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, you're, you're an entre entrepreneur, but you work the day job. Mm -hmm. Um, you're doing the other stuff, trials. the trials, mm -hmm. you're doing the other stuff, uh, e-stores and all of that. And all that stuff funds you as an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? It allows you to um, use that money to create films because right. that's not free right. or cheap, especially at the level that you're at doing it at now. Yeah. Well, not all not all of my money goes to, you know, the production budget of, uh, of like, my films or anything. Um, you know, the trial technology consultant, that's the official title for the stuff I do in trials. Um, I don't know if you want me to explain what I do with that, but pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It, too much detail, but yeah. How about much you want to share? But that, that, that allocates for majority of my income at the moment. Um, so, you know, I can use that to, you know, set aside and have money to pay bills. And then, you know, the production budget for, you know, this last film, the last feature that I did, um, it's called Faith. Um, well, we're going to get there. Yeah, that budget was around like 60, 70,000. So I use maybe, um, I'll, I mean, when we get there, I'll explain more of what that's, because that 60, 70,000 isn't really 60, 70,000. I'll explain to you what that means later. Yeah, because that's um, one of my questions about like what's a typical budget and in, um, in that stuff around that. Yeah, that's still considered pretty dirt cheap, just. Spoiler alert. So, <laughs> so, so how do you, just in general, like how do you normally come up with your content? Does it depend? Uh, like for the films or? For, yeah, for your films. Um, I always liked watching, I mean, it's fun to watch those like, you know, action comedy, like Marvel kind of movies and like escape for a bit. But I've always like really liked the deep, serious kind of like dramas, mm -hmm. like the character study type pieces. Um, like for example, like one of my favorite movies of all time is the social network and, um, like social network, slumdog millionaire. Um, like, uh, let me see 127 hours. Um, in, in the movies, you know, movies like that in those veins, those are the ones I really like, um, like doing. So majority of my films are, um, dramas and, you know, yeah, majority of my films are dramas, and um, I'll do, you know I'll have like um, like a comedy element to it, or like a thriller element to it, or you know, or rift on another genre as a part of it. But majority of them are dramas, just because those are the type of movies that I liked. 
Gotcha. I like watching. And I think you probably answered this question with that answer. Um, but is there a, a, always a specific goal that you're trying to accomplish with all of the films, or does it is it yeah. based on the particular film? Yeah, no. I mean, I take inspiration from some films that I like. Um, like another great film that I love is called um, American Honey. And my most recent film, um, Faith, mm-hmm. a lot of inspiration for how how we shot that movie and some of the, you know, some of Faith's characteristics come from the movie American Honey. Um, so, you know, that movie had a big influence on, on Faith. But for majority of the films, um, I just want there to be like an important message behind it mm-hmm. and try and get it across. So, you know, like the very first one I did, in you know after that crappy little static shock movie um <laughs> the first one i did in in college was called long distance and then it was just highlighting long distance relationship i used tyler and molly as my actors oh i remember uh, that yeah and then shout out to tyler and molly yeah and to this day that's still my most viewed video on youtube it has like 30 or forty thousand views or something um but tyler you know, and molly might have something to do with that right I set nah. them up because they weren't <laughs> married at the time. Oh. So I, pu- I planted that seed in their head. So I take credit for all of that. <laughs> um, so, you know, you know, that one's all about long distance relationships and kind of, you know, the struggles and, you know, getting to FaceTime your significant other on time um, and everything. And then, um, you know, that one was more of like more like one of the lighthearted kind of films. Um, and then, you know, I started getting more serious with, you know, Life as Such was about, you know, like homelessness. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw a homeless guy by our local gas station. Um, you know, I just figured, like, you know, how did he get here? You know, like, yeah, I ask that question a lot about homeless people. I know a lot of them want to be homeless. Some people want to be homeless, but some of them, you know, actually went through some stuff and figured out, you know, why. So, like, how they got there. Um, and then the, um, the next one I did after that was, in, in no particular order, but, you know, um, the chocolate shop was about, you know, Alzheimer's, you know, the main character in that story. She was, you know, forgetting her husband. Um, you know, Breathe was about PTSD. Um, faith, even faith, you know, is about, you know, religion and questioning one's faith and what they were taught to believe. Um, what else? You know, um, you know, so I just, you know, the next one I have coming up is kind of like a rift off of Alice in Wonderland. And but that one's going to focus around like domestic violence. So finding ways to you know get serious subject matter out there, and just finding interesting ways to to tell it. You know, like the one about domestic violence. Domestic violence is going to be the core, you know, the core issue that we're trying to highlight in that story. But you know, we're adding elements of you know like Alice in Wonderland and where the wild things are. And all that stuff. That's still in like super early development, but um, you know, just hints on that. So if you hear that, you can think about how you can incorporate those things. Um, and just like even with faith, you know, I was, you know, the main goal of that was, you know, yes, it's about, you know, faith and, you know, you know, questioning what you were what you were taught growing up, um, especially when it comes to like religion and things like that. And things that you're sheltered from and everything, um, but the main point with that was just trying trying to find a interesting way, like a new interesting way to tell a story about religion, you know, rather than just like you know a run of the mill kind of, you know, pray God answers prayers and then that's the end of the movie, you know. So you know sometimes people have to actually go through some things, and you know we with faith we kind of do like kind of like an extreme version of someone going through some things like some people may watch it and be like well you know i don't think you know a logical person might actually do that but you know again just the point of it was to just you know i don't think i've seen a film about religion done in that way yeah and so i think you know just trying to trying to find new ways to handle interesting and like serious subject matter yeah i can't wait to see that um i've seen some clips and that that's yeah. gonna be. Serious. It's taking a really long time to finish. It's well, not a really. It's taking much longer than I thought to finish that. Um, that's partly due to me, you know, kind of sitting on it and letting it marinate to make sure you know things make sense. Um, partially, you know, I have a lot of people working on it who are my buddies who are kind of just doing it 
for out of the kindness of their heart and helping me out. What kind of things do they work on? Because I know I know of a couple of people that are like doing some stuff, but like what? yeah. Um, so like for for example, like right now, it's um, you probably don't want to get in the name call it, but you could have yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about these people. No, no. They're, I mean, like, are you going to forget anybody? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm um, just for the particular examples. Um, so like right now, the film is in sound design, and that's you know layman's turn it's just sound mixing making sure everything sounds like good adding um you know adding background noises to yeah give me all the layman's terms yeah <laughs> adding background layman's noises terms. to all the different scenes and making sure everything sounds properly like making sure it sounds good pretty much um and you know my buddy nathan who i met i only met nathan on the very first day of filming um for faith because he was the boom operator also and you know operator so the um the boom mic so a microphone he's like holding the microphone up, okay micing gotcha the, micing the actors just, just say he was holding the microphone man <laughs> the boom operator <laughs> um and you know he's you know a great guy great great guy and he's um he's doing sound design for the film and he's not charging me um but with that because you know he has other other things to do also right so that's just taking up time you know same thing with um so it's in sound design right now and then music is being music scoring right now so music is being created to fit the scenes to you know help pull everything together and, and just to clarify this isn't like recycled music or other people's music this is music the that people are making music for your yeah. team is and friends are making yeah specifically for the film yeah mm -hmm. it's called um it's called the score that's the official you know, word for it so you know kevin my buddy kevin alexander another great great guy helping me out um and you know again a lot of these people i met kevin in college mm -hmm. so you know using those connections there um he works at universal records and i know he's busy but you know again he's you know finding the time to um to get it done and then you know there was a few things that we needed to reshoot and it still needs to go through like color correction and all that stuff but i'm just really this is like the biggest and like the longest film that i've made and you know, I, I told a joke to like all to the cast and crew like the very first day of shooting. I was like, "Man, we're about to go through this, go through this journey together, and we're gonna get to the end of the film, and we're gonna premiere it. And it's gonna be garbage." <laughs> <laughs> and this is like a quick joke to like break the ice. Um, but I'm just I say that to say I'm really taking my time to make sure it's at least not garbage. Yeah, it's not garbage, man. Yeah. Come on, man, it's not garbage. Yeah. From what I've seen, it's gonna be sick. Yeah. And I know uh, every night it seems like when we're up, um, Joe is up in the studio. Yeah, that's and he's boy, like, man. he's literally like making music. So yeah, Joe's making music for. So yeah, funny story. So we had one reshoot to do for Faith for that film at the beach, and we only needed one of the actors, and you know all of that stuff. And Joe, Joe wasn't the main cinematographer on um, on Faith. Um, that was another my other friend Ben, uh, Ben Sager, um, but Ben Joe so Joe so this the, like the like the A team and B team and like Joe's on the B team. Joe's really really good, but it's just just Unit A and Unit B, um, and Joe was the cinematographer on the unit on the B unit, um, and so I didn't need to get you know the whole you know thirty forty um, crew members back together to do a f with turned out to be like a 45 50 minute long shoot um and joe's my boy i talked to joe like joe like every like every every day mm -hmm. and so we we're just like yeah let's just you know it was this me joe caroline who's the actor who we needed to reshoot and um because joe has his own production company also it's called passionate pro um and then in passionate pro he has passionate films and then that's that's his thing um and so yeah he has people who work for him as well so i was like okay we'll just use passionate pro you can bring your crew, like, um, you don't need, like, two or three people. And then we can go just reshoot this thing for the film. Um, and then, you know, knowing Joey's like, man, we're going to pull a whole, you know, pull a whole crew together for a 45-minute thing at the beach. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So we came up with um, another. That was probably followed by a laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Joe laughs, like, after every uh, couple words. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Joe. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we came up with what is now called, um, Winter's Beach, the, you know, the, the placeholder name for it was called The Beach With You, 
Um, but it's now yeah, it's now called Winter's Beach. And so what we did was, you know, we shot. We were getting the crew together for to do that reshoot for Faith, and it was just one actress. So I asked Caroline, I was like, hey, if we do, if we try to do like another like short film, the day that we're shooting at the beach, and it all takes place at the beach, um, like would you be down? And Caroline's the homie, so she was like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. Um, and so we came up with like a um, like another short film, and then we shot that at the beach after we finished everything for Faith. Um, and it turned out like, ri- you know, it's not it's not completely finished yet. So, so what you were hearing on the FaceTimes and all that stuff was him working on the music and editing and score and stuff for uh, for Winter's Beach. Um, but it turned like I've shown you a clip from it and everything. Yeah. And it turns out like great. Yeah. Like I'm acting in it too. My acting is not as bad as I remember. At least I think. I don't know. Um, You're biased, right? No, nah, man. I saw it. It, uh, it was really good, man. So. Um, yeah. That's what's up. But, I mean, we just literally ran through a bunch of stuff. So, like, if you're wondering about film, the hour to two-hour film, your favorite film that you watched probably took, what, years? Yeah. A lot of people make the mistake. Even a, even a five-minute long film mm. will take weeks, you know? Um, like, yeah, a, a typical film, like an hour, like hour and a half long film, usually is not an hour and a half long. They usually shoot probably a lot more than that, and then it's edited down. And shooting can go anywhere from, even if you're on, like, a bare, bare budget, shooting can go anywhere from a week to, like, two, three months, just depending, because there's so many different things that go into... um, That's like I always say, like, whenever I'm about to start a project that I'm in charge of, like, I'm the director and the producer of the whole thing, like, with Faith, I always get, I'm like, why did I get... It's, like, stressful, but it's good stressful because you want to do it. Right. But there's so it's uncomfortable. So, yeah, there's so much planning and juggling schedules, juggling location schedules, especially with me because I like I like going places to shoot things. Um, I don't really like shooting on like a lot on like a green screen or something like that. I like going to physical places because it's like part of an adventure, or whatever you know. Um, but juggling all the like the locations and their schedules. Um, I'll give you an example for like Faith. We rented out an entire campsite and they had like they had like tenants there and people doing things there and we had like a you know, a certain window of time to get everything done. Mm-hmm. Um so st- you know, stuff like that. Location times, actors, schedules, crew schedules, just getting the crew together yeah. to begin with, and then the whole audition process. For Faith, I would auditioned over like two hundred and fifty people. Wow. And then um and then, like, you know, narrowed it down. Um, getting the crew together, making sure we can secure equipment, like equipment rentals. Um, and then, you know, making sure, you know, figuring out the budget. Um, and, you know, there's a whole like, a whole bunch of stuff. Is that, like, how you figure out the budget? Like, how we you would figure out your normal budget? Like, um, all right, this, this is how many actors I need. This is the location. Because you talk about renting out, like, the campgrounds. But I also know you kind of, like, rented time with coffee shop or was it yeah a, mm-hmm. so the and gas station again stuff? again that's where the connections come through crazy so we, that coffee shop for example that's actually that's actually where joe's wife works and she's really really good friends with the owner of that place gotcha. so it, literally because that that coffee shop scene in the film was originally supposed to be like a fast food restaurant where she was working um but we couldn't secure one in time and it's literally maybe like three or four days before we we're supposed to shoot there i just text jelaine i'm like hey you think it would be cool if we work if we like shoot at that coffee shop? And she was like, "Hey, let me just you know text the owner and find out." And then just find out what time we needed. We had to come and do it after they closed, obviously. Um, and then gave us like you know a good three four hours in there, and we were able to. And how much would that would uh, around approximately how much would that have cost you without the connection? You think? <sighs> Based off what I was seeing, because so another important thing to note is that I. I shoot some things in in the Hollywood proper, like in Los Angeles, um, but a lot of it I shoot outside because a lot of things you can get you can get done for cheaper, gotcha. especially for the type of movies that I make. I don't necessarily need to be in L.A. proper right. to get to get that stuff. Um, but for a coffee shop rent, I mean, it, I can easily be like three, like three, four hundred dollars an hour, gotcha. depending. And that's, I'm you know, I'm guessing that's like on the the cheaper end of things. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so and, and again, connections like that. And and you know what I was saying before about budget, I told you it was like sixty, seventy thousand. Um, you know, that's not sixty, seventy thousand out of my pocket or anything. Out of my pocket I maybe maybe like fifteen grand is how much I spent. Um but you know, the rest of that comes from you know, I did we did do fundraising. So, you know, financiers like that. Even like dad and Uncle Chubby, you know, they're pretty big fun um financiers. Um, that their dad and Uncle Chubby actually paid for the um, for the campsite that we rented. Man, Uncle Chubby always, yeah, always, always coming, coming through. through. Shout out to Uncle Chubby, man. Always, yeah, Uncle Chubby. Uh, that my that's, godfather. Yeah, Ian's godfather. Um, he ever since we were young, I was like, dang it, why wasn't that my godfather? <laughs> man, I yeah. love yeah, I love Uncle Chubby, man. Yeah, um, man. yeah. So and you know the campsite was about like like three or four grand. To um to rent out and then you know we had other you know you know other finances here and here and there not just you know family put out like a proper like fundraising campaign and raised a few few thousand um and then the rest of the budget comes from it's what's called um you know I don't actually know my old my film professor told it to me but it's it's called it's from like, somebody else. Well, that's yeah, the yeah, yeah, but that's the technical term for it. It comes from somebody else. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the actual term, so I'm not even going to attempt to say it. But I just told much, you what it was. <laughs> but pretty much what it is is not I. It comes from don- not I. Okay, I think it's called it's donated something, donated, donated finances or something like that. Okay. Um, where it's not that, but it's something like that. Um, but pretty much like all the equipment rentals, all the cameras, tripods, lights, you know. You know, stingers, power cords, gotcha. um, like all of that stuff. The total budget of how much that stuff would cost, even though it was donated, um, that's because I had a g- I have a good um, relationship with the film school at La Sierra, and um, I and you know a lot of my a lot of my crew are people from La Sierra, and it's you know it's cool where we even worked it out with um, not even just on Faith on like a couple other films. Um, you know, Professor Carrie, she Carrie and Rodney. Great, great people. Um, they will, Carrie will work it out. It would be like if her students want to come and be production assistants on my on my films, she'll give them like extra credit. They'll point point for extra credit towards their classes and all that stuff. Um, and so I have a really good relationship with them. And so majority, not everything, but a lot of the equipment that we use for faith um, came from um, came from them. And then all of that total. In rental fees and all that stuff around like forty, fifty thousand dollars. Wow, that's great. Can we just take a moment to talk about the power of network? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, seriously, man, like you just ran down just off of one film how much you saved. Yeah. But like collectively, since we started this conversation, the the connections you've had and just naturally being yourself, um, and not burning any bridges, and um, you know, you just connected to people that uh, that you can call for favors that would cost other people an arm and a leg, and I'm sure it's vice versa too. You know, somebody may call you for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the way we, the way like at least me and my f- my friends who are in this type of stuff, how we work it out. Like with Joe, for example, um, like I didn't, you know, we pay each other through like works. Like helping each other out on our product on our projects with the idea that these product these projects will take us places and then we um, you know get successful off of that you know That's what's up, man. Um, so like a lot of my friends who um, who help me out and don't either they either they will help me out and they can do it for free or they charge me like very very little um, you know I'm super super grateful for them because I wouldn't be able to get the stuff done. Um, or at least it'll take me a lot longer to get the stuff done than yeah. um, without having those network of people. And you're sowing seeds. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then if they seeds. don't, there's been a ton, like Nathan, for example, who's doing sound design, um, our producer for um, for Faith, Michelle, I was like, hey, do you know, because um, I didn't know anyone who, I needed, I needed a boom operator and someone who knew what they were doing with sound. And then she was like, yeah, I got, um, I didn't know Nathan before. She's like, yeah, I have a friend, Nathan, who uh, just finished, is like finishing up college just for that stuff. 
And and then I was like, okay, yeah, you can maybe hit him up and see. And then like a couple of days later, I get a text from Nathan like, hey, are you still looking for someone to do, um, you know, to be boom up on your on your thing and do sound design and everything? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. And, you know, people do it for the experience. Um, they do it for, you know, just to, you know, you know, and this is like, we were shooting in a pandemic also, which, um, you know, thankfully we're all, we we're all super safe and doing all that stuff. But also, particularly during that time, you know, not a lot of stuff was going on. Um, so people just wanted to get out and, you know, get stuff done. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, network is, is, is crazy. It's nice. I'm looking for somebody to edit. So if you want experience, <laughs> trying to offload this from uh, my plate. Uh, but now I have, I have a couple people in my, um, uh, but anyway, yeah. Editing is the, like, I love making films. I love making stuff, but editing is the one, like, it's tough. It's fun to edit because you see your thing coming together. Like for my films, I usually will do, after everything's all shot and everything, I will usually do the first edit myself just to make sure, since I'm like the director, so I'd make sure at least the vision is kind of there yeah. for whoever I pass it on to next to, to polish it up. But editing, yeah, is it is my least favorite part. It's it sucks because it's actually the most important, especially in this type of stuff. Yeah. It's the most important part, but it's the least it's my least favorite part. Yeah, it's a job in itself. Yeah. I'm trying to hand that off because um it's just the extra and it slows the process. But if you have somebody that's good at it, yeah. I was talking to Kariga, shout out to Kariga, um Kariga Bailey, um the other day and he was uh he was just like, Yeah, bro, you gotta offload that. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want that. Yeah. You don't want that. Uh, it's time consuming. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You don't Especially want that. Especially if you want to, you know, continue to get more like podcasts done there. Yeah. More things done. Yeah. Yeah. We're going we gonna to get them out. I'll get it figured out. Yeah. Um, so about just to close off about uh, Faith, when when can we expect to see it? When it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> that's, been, <laughs> that's been my that's been my my answer recently. I, I feel so bad. I told all the actors and crew and everything. I was like, yeah, I can probably get like a rough draft done in like a couple months and then be done. And that was almost like a year and a half ago. Um, so yeah, when it's done, it's just taken a bit longer. My, my hope is for like February, March of this year of 2022. I mean, um, is, is what I'm hoping. Cause I really would like to get it done before the next wave of um, festivals so I can submit them. Um, but yeah, that's you know I'm not. I really want, really want, like I said, I really, I really want to make sure that that's at least decent that film. Um, so I'm kind of just taking our time on it. So whenever it's done, but hopefully early 2022. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. So wh- where can we see all of the uh, all of your work so far? Um, you know, I, I actually don't have like a website or anything. I probably should. I really should get on that YouTube um, channel. Yeah, so two, so I kind of have to. So, come a couple of my films that were bought by a different company. Mm. So, it's no longer on my channel, it's on their channel. Um, so, like, if you search, I don't know, just search Good to Go Media on YouTube, um, and you know, Such as Life and Breathe are the ones that they bought for me. So those um, those are on their YouTube channel, so you can see them there. Or you can see them on, like, their Facebook page or something. Um, and then, you know, The Chocolate Shop, I was a director and a co-producer on that, but that was Vester's um, film under Banner Day. Shout out to Vester. Yeah, under Banner Day Productions. So if you go to Banner Day Productions' YouTube channel, you can see um, The Chocolate Shop there. Um, and, yeah, you know, I'm, I really got to work on... Because even though these things are in different places, if I have a website, I can have links to yeah. all these different things. So I should yeah, get definitely want to get your website. Okay, that's what's up. Uh, what's your social media? Uh, How can we follow, find you? Yeah, I'm most active on Instagram, Ian Walker style. Um, exactly how it sounds, Ian Walker style. And, um, you know, Facebook, Ian Walker. Um, and, yeah, those are pretty much the... Two things I'm most active on. I don't have a Twitter or anything like that. Gotcha. That's what's up. Um, right before we close, what's your favorite movie of all time? All right, top three. I'll try and tell you a top three. I don't really have favorite movies. I have like favorite directors. Okay. Or like favorite people who make 
All right, who's your top three directors? Um, I'm probably not going to know any of these people. Yeah, no, well, Ryan Coogler, um, Christopher Nolan. I've heard that name before. Um, and I think it's like a tie between, it's like a three-way tie between David Fincher, Spike Lee, and, um, and man, I'm forgetting, why am I forgetting his name? Shoot. The guy who made um, Slumdog Millionaire in 127 Hours. So you just um, took a top three and made it a top five. What's yeah, okay? it's, yeah, <laughs> it's hard. But if I try to like narrow down movies that like have affected like how I make movies, yeah, um, The Social Network for sure, um, and The Social Network, um, Interstellar, um, and um, Fruitville Station. Mm. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. All right. So in closing, what is some advice that you would give somebody um, that's hit a rough patch, feeling unsuccessful, uh, like they don't measure up to their peers um, and other people's success? Yeah. You know, everyone has their own uh, you know, idea or opinion on what success is. Um, you know, you can see someone who's like a millionaire and think they're super successful. Um, but to them, they're not successful at all. And that can, you know, not necessarily because of the money, let's say they're a millionaire, but they don't have time to spend with their family or anything like that. Um, you know, I wouldn't consider that person necessarily successful. So, you know, if you're feeling, um, if you're feeling like you're, not like measuring up to, you know, someone else. Just, you know, remember that everyone's on their own time. You know, things take time. Um, you know, there's a big, you know, sense to kind of try and rush and get things done. But again, like, you know, the quickest way is the slowest way, if that makes sense. You know, just take your time. And, um, and yeah, you know, every everything happens in everyone's own time. And if, as long as you don't give up, on your as long as you don't give up on what it is you're trying to achieve like no matter what it is um then that's when it'll really like mess with you but you know as long as you don't give up you know things things come up you know here and there that can cause some setbacks um you know like families or you know needing to f actually find a job to you know pay bills to get by and things like that but as long as you you know keep keep um either baby stepping or whatever then you'll eventually hit those things there it is yep well, that's a wrap like tap <laughs> comment share come back we out